Yes, Madhuri, how you can start. A very good morning to all of you. This is Madhulika and I welcome you all to yet another Zoom webinar organized by Jungle Bells. Now, what is Jungle Bells? Jungle Bells is a Pune-based venture exclusively designed for women and started by women Hemangi Vardak and Ardi Karve. We conduct women-only trips to all the wildlife destinations across India. Also, we conduct Pune-based nature trips in and around. Also, we conduct nature-based tours in and around Pune. The main objective of our venture is to promote wildlife tourism and wildlife conservation. So this is all about jungle bells. Also, we have upcoming tours. Those are short tours and long tours. We have big one tours, Sihagar tours, which are included in the short sessions. And also we have wildlife tours in the upcoming month of May and June. So definitely you all can connect with us for more details. Before we begin, I request all of you to please switch off your cameras and turn off your microphones so that uh, we can get a good experience of today's webinar. So today's topic is very interesting and the topic name is Wildlife Photo Stories. And uh, we have a very special guest with us. Uh, his name is Dr. Sudhir Hasamnis, sir. Speaking uh -huh. about his journey, uh, his education, basically he is a mechanical engineer by profession and has done PGTBM, Dual Operations and Materials Management, Doctorate in Management Science with specialization in impact of strategic planning process and organizations. 2013 ISBM. Speaking about his social work, he has worked with Tata Motors Community Development Center in various areas of social work, such as skits on social subjects, tree plantation, helping the needy and poor, supporting rural students by various means, technical training and active participation in social audits. He also works for wildlife conservation. Speaking about his wildlife photography passion, he has, he has been working in the wildlife conservation, teaching and photography since 2016. While pursuing a hobby of wildlife and bird photography, have set two records, India Books of Records and three records at Asia Book of Records for non-stop posting on social media for seven years on social media, that is Facebook, without missing a single day. Currently, he is in the eighth season and target, and his target is 3,000 non-stop posts. Widely, he has widely visited across the globe and to most famous Indian wildlife sanctuaries for wildlife photography places. And these places include Japan, Singapore, Thailand, Tanzania, Kenya, Bhutan, Costa Rica, UAE, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. He has covered 930 plus species from Indian subcontinent and 500 plus from other countries. So this is all about his wonderful journey. Without further ado, let's get started. I request Hemaki ma'am to please take the conversation ahead with sir. Sir, welcome to this platform. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning to all. Good morning, yes. sir. A very warm welcome on our platform. Um, as I have Madhulika has stressed, so we we basically conduct these webinars so that yes. you know it's more for awareness. Uh, there are a lot of um, women or overall uh, people who do not get to go in nature or wildlife or do not know anything about it, and uh, for for them also it's like an uh, you know uh, an eye opener that everyone should you know at least step into nature other than yes. you know what the normal our routines are so uh, we have carried on this series from uh, the covid times and um, i'm sure the, later on this gets uploaded on the youtube and we have a lot of viewership at that point of time uh, so a very warm welcome and let's get on with the uh, first question so um, since now you have, I have just, I was reading through your bio and you come from a completely uh, technical plus a Tata Motors kind of a background. Yes. So how did you actually get in, get interested into wildlife? Actually, there is a small story which I will share. Some of uh, our friends may know it. Uh, I had a heart attack in 22. Okay. And uh, I was in musical concert uh, in the, during the Wali part. And I never came to know that I am going through heart attack. Uh, and I carried it on my body for almost uh, six, seven days. Okay. I even after that, I drove to Bombay. Came. Then while coming back, I realized that I lost my rest. 
So I went and showed my company doctors and they started actually laughing at me. They said, give your car, give your mobile, everything they took out and took me to hospital. I was straight away admitted to CCU. And okay. then, then they found that I, because I carried uh, for six, seven days, there were clots. So they asked me to take a bed rest of two months. Okay. Uh, of course, I was sainted. So after sending, they told me uh, my laptop and my mobile was taken out. So what to do? I was not allowed to even walk for more than 10 minutes. Okay. So I, I used to stay just behind the MIT college. Through, mm -hmm. And uh, I had no option but to sit at home. So I cut open my windows and uh, I had binoculars. My okay. niece gave me a Sony camera 10X. So I used to watch that. At that time, I had no idea. But, but sir, um, I am seeing. So I used to click something and ask friends. So after some time, they got bored. They said, Ki Sudhir, you better buy a book. So I bought <laughs> of Indian subcontinent. Yeah. Right. In Skip in Skipara. And then started the birds uh, study. So I used to mug up at least three pages a day. So I must have gone some eight to ten times through the book till now. Yes. And uh, I started knowing the birds. Then I said, why not start clicking at least whatever I need. And then after some time, doctor gave me permission to go out and shoot. So my first trip was to Kochi. I have a It was a test case. I've been there for three days and I started clicking. So I came into photography seriously uh, from 2016. Okay. Okay. That's, that's amazing. So um, this was an... Um... I don't know what to say, but this got you into, you know, the nature, your health condition yeah. at that point of time. Yes. Uh, we are very happy, good to know that you're hale and hearty right now yeah, and yeah. you're pursuing whatever you could. But yes. th this is for everyone who listens, you know, I always say, because last time also we had someone, we had a female photographer, Kriti Wali, I don't know if you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So she fought depression and she came into this nature and all that healed her in some what way yes yes, so we yes totally believe that this is very very important so that is really good to know uh so i think we've covered the next question since when did you uh you know develop an interest in wildlife photography so you've been pursuing yeah. that very actively from 2016 as i uh, can yes. understand yes yeah, yeah. so uh let's get on um can you share a few of your first uh, experiences and photographs after you started your wildlife journey? So if you would, would want to yeah, show yeah. us. Uh, yeah, I will share. Yeah. I hope everybody is able to see the screen. Yes, yes, it's very, it's uh, it's good. We are good. Yeah. So before I go forward, uh, yeah. of course, there is no need to now thank, but it's a good <laughs> no, opportunity to good. yes me thank to you. get connected with people. Uh, yeah. What happened was um, uh, after my retirement, I superintended in twenty fifteen. So July twenty fifteen, and uh, I decided that I should do something differently and uh, follow this hobby of photography. So on 1st January 2016, I decided to uh, start my self-challenge series. So uh, it was the challenge was taken for one year. And luckily that was a leap year. Again, this is also a leap year. So that leap year, I thought okay, I will post at least 366 photographs every day without a break. So uh, I started taking photographs and started putting it. So these were my early days. So if you see this first photograph, this was posted, uh, this was taken at Sasword. So I started uh, my real journey from the Kochi. Kochi was my test case, but from Sasword I started and this was my first uh, photograph which I took and published. So it is still there. Then of course I went through many places. Dandil is my favorite uh, place. So I go almost uh, two to three times in a year. This February and I'm going there. So these were my few photographs from the beginning. At that time, I Lovely. had little idea about framing it, 
removing the noise, processing it, and uh, visiting big one and all that. Uh, I will okay. share few photographs and I may share one one or two stories. This is sure. of course from Dandeli, Timber Depot and other area. Yes. Of course, another from Saswal. So I will share one or two stories. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, perfectly fine. Yes, sir. So this is actually from uh, Buj, Nalia, Great okay. Indian Busters. And this yes. was uh, very high on my list. And there is a very young boy called uh, Liakat Notiar, Liakatari Notiar. He comes from uh, that place only, Nalia. Okay. And he used to contact me that, sir, come, aajau, bahut achha hai. So I thought, let's go. Because this is on the verge of distinction. Everybody. Distinct, so yeah, it will true. last year. So it will be something uh, 100 odd birds are in the wild now. Yeah. So I thought I will go there. So we went Buj, Nalia, and then we decided to go inside one place, like they call it as a sanctuary, but okay. this place is actually uh, governed by military because this place uh, is very near to the border side. So okay. you can't go inside so easily. Um, we entered with our uh, vehicle and they stopped us. So there is a military okay. check post, they stopped us and they said, where are you going? What do you want? All this thing. So we showed them our cameras. We told them that these are the so-called rare birds. We want to see them. So they Kahan se aaya? We told them that we have come from Pune to see this. So they were very happy. So we showed them from internet. These birds look like this. So there was one uh, uncle from that place. He used to know that place very well. So he mm -hmm. took it us inside. And we wow. were lucky to see these birds at very close distance. We photographed them for two days and while coming back, we showed to these military guys and they were very happy to see these birds. They said, ah, I have never seen them. So I told them that these are the last few hundred left in India. So this was very interesting and uh, very fruitful visit. This is another interesting species was forest outlet and uh, uh, th this is a uh, shot at Medagat. Everybody knows that place. Very. Wow, yes. But, yes. but very uh, tough to go because yes. last 50, 60 kilometers, you lose the mobile signal and navigation is also an issue. And okay. the guide who helped us gave us a lot of wrong information. So oh. we drove down for almost 16 hours from Pune wow. to this place. Oh, and, wow. Uh, and uh, just to interrupt, sir, Meghat, even I've been, I could hardly cover any expanse because the hugeness of the forest is so much yes. that you know you cannot get to cover. You, know, you really have to no, have no, that patience, awesome. it cannot get. Yeah, yeah, correct. So that's why we actually thought of um, getting connected to a local guide. So mm -hmm. there is a wonderful small butterfly park inside the Meghat Reserve. Yeah, correct. And this. This uh, outlet can be seen very near to them. Correct. And, yeah. and we had actually mistimed everything. So we okay. started late from Pune and uh, we forgot before planning that it was a Ganpati procession day. Okay. And throughout the Maharashtra, there were processions going on. So somehow okay. we could navigate. And because we were wearing uh, camo clothes, people and police thought that we are from military. <laughs> So they used to okay, actually yeah. allow our vehicle to go. So even okay. without paying toll naka taxes and all that, we somehow reached. But we reached to Meghat uh, Reserve around 10 yeah. o'clock next morning. Yes, it's a long time. By yeah. the time we went there, the guide said, Sir, wo gaya, you missed the meeting shot. Oh, I said, this is very tragic. He said, now next day. Uh, we said, no, no, nothing. We will try this today only. Yeah. So we again went inside the forest. We found the place. Then there is a UP farmer who has shifted to this place. And okay. he is the person who can mimic the outlet call. He, oh. he, uh, he can play the call by his mom. Yeah. So he, we started searching him and he, there people told us he has gone for food at home. So we okay. brought him up. And he came and he said, I will call it. 
and we had very lace kind of um, chances that it will come out because it was almost 11.30. Right. He went, he was away from us hardly 500 meters and he gave a call and within two minutes, two outlets responded. Oh. Then he said, you to So we waited there. And after two, three calls, it started coming down. It was a 20, 70, 80 feet away, away from us at height. And it started climbing down. He said, don't worry, it will climb, come down 20, 30 feet from you. Mm. Just wait there. So we waited and this outlet actually came. It, it stayed more than one hour in front of us. It did hunting also. So it killed one rodent and started eating. So almost uh, one, one and a half hour we were with these outlets. Very lucky to see them in lucky, front of yeah. us. And Correct. then we started back. Yeah, so, so wonderful. Yeah, this is uh, again a Barbary falcon, red nip shine. Uh, I always believe on the last safari. I think most of us we believe in last safari. Yes, the luck actually <laughs> clicks on the last safari. Yes, absolutely. So, this we were in um, LRK, little run of catch, and we we were looking for actual peregrine falcon with kill because we we had seen it. So there is a very interesting place called Dada Temple. So our guide said, Ki, let's go to Dada Temple. Your luck will shine. I said, whatever it is, we will do everything <laughs> for it. So yes. we went to that temple, offered prayer. And in that temple only, we got uh, owl, pilot scops owl. Okay. And we came out. And from a distance only to almost one, one and a half kilometer distance, he, the driver said that, sir, your luck is now shining. I said, what happened? He said, I will give you a surprise. And actually, we saw a very small black dot on one mount. But he said, there is a surprise for all of us. Let's go fast. So we rushed there and we saw this fellow sitting on the mount. And he said, start shooting. So he was positioning the car and it was almost in front of us for more than 20 minutes. And by the time Ooh. we were shooting, he started calling everybody who were he knew they are in the field. So he, he called Nero, but he called many other people. Come immediately, very rare bird is here. <laughs> and the car started rushing over there. But we got a very good uh, opportunity to shoot this yes. again, a rare bird. Yeah. And it's this is again, um, yeah, it's a watch strogon in Bhutan. Mm. Again, we had a very good uh, luck to get it. Uh, we earlier day we missed it. Uh, we had a glimpse of the birds, but next mm -hmm. day morning actually our driver was very alert, and he saw on the road itself. It's what right. they were just touching the highway, and he saw and he said, "Sir, Trogon, Trogon." So we stopped and uh, we shot it from the highway only. So again, oh, another wow. thing. So this is the male and female, right, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and very close quarters. They were in the canopy. But okay. uh, we got them from very wonderful. Yeah, Lovely. you can go ahead. Yes. This is really, uh, I mean, amazing birds. Trogon, I feel first time you mentioned Dandeli, and uh, I had been there just once last yeah. year, and I fell in love with the place, yeah. uh, specifically the old magazine house. And um, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. because of the hide and birds, it's also because of. Uh, the overall atmosphere there with the very courteous yes. people and yes, uh, the food is lovely. <laughs> so they say, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Not... We know that. <laughs> yeah, so someone, I mean, I had women, I mean, ladies with me who had traveled and they wanted to go back also for the food. It's just not the birding. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, and there we saw a trogon, but it was that time, first time, the Malabar trogon, I, I got to see yeah, yeah. first time, but this looks really amazing i mean this is different so wonderful uh, this thing so i would like to continue asking you that yeah. are you a self-taught photographer or um have you do you have a mentor in this field i mean do you follow someone or something like that uh, in the beginning what happened was um i superintended in 2015 and okay. i was just playing with camera and all other settings all right. so i used to follow sudhir shivram okay and uh, 
I checked with him once. He said, Sudhir, I'm coming down to Pune in November. I am going to have two days workshop. So I thought, oh. why not to have a, at least some technical training? Correct. So I did his workshop in November 2015. Okay. And uh, then we become a very good friend. So I did his uh, first uh, Tanzania trip in uh, February 2016 with him. So okay. since okay. yeah, since then we are together. We follow each other. Whenever we have doubt or something, we ask him. He also keeps on sending a lot of photo tips. So yeah. we are almost connected on a daily basis, weekly basis with them. Oh, but after that, good. yes, I, I picked up from a lot of friends. Uh, you must have heard about there is a um, very good group called Bird Monitors of Pune. Yes. So with yes, Siddesh yeah. Brahmulkar and all these people Siddesh, are there. Yes, correct. So correct. Ramakan so Yeah. They also keep on guiding so we have a very good exchange platform. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful to know. Yes. So, uh, what is your uh, gear? I mean, which camera do you use? And uh, I mean, our audience would like to know. Yeah, I basically, I use uh, Canon gears. All right. Um, so I I have uh, 6D, which is a full frame. Okay. Then 70 Mark II. Then now I have bought. Uh, R7, then okay. I have 100 400 IS2 lens. I okay. use 1.48 TC on it. Now I have a R7 and 100 500, which is a very useful and lightweight uh, combo kit available. So normally I use okay. Canon gear. Right. But what I do is whenever I go outside or some big tour, then I will hire a lens from Prime and Zooms. So normally I get a prime lenses from them, trip like Tanzania, Kenya, Costa Rica. Then I hire a prime lens from them. Right, right. So okay. I okay. use basically prime lens is a 300 2.8 with 2x okay. TC. Okay. Then 500 f4 both Canon and Sigma. But okay. I somehow I found Sigma 500 f4 is a very good lens. Very okay. fast okay. and very sharp. Okay, okay, okay. That's great because um, I used to. I'm I'm very happy when I get to meet someone who uses Canon gear because a lot of people are on Sony and uh, <laughs> uh, nothing wrong, but Nikon. But I have also been a Canon user, so I'm, and I'm very happy with my hundred four hundred. So it's given me good results in terms of mammal mode. Yeah, yeah, it's so one that of, is a one very of the good best lens. lens yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, when you go on these trips, okay, you usually, do you travel solo or you have a group of your own or how is it? I mean, uh, do you prefer to travel solo in the terms of, you know, preference wise or, um, you know? Yeah. No, what happened was not because of my background of heart attack and those right. kind of, nothing went wrong after that. Right. right. Because I'm with the nature, I'm watching the birds. The stress is almost now zero. zero. I enjoy yeah. nature. So, if I have a two, three groups. Okay. Uh, but they are not big groups. They are three or four people. Okay. So, one is Pune Boy's group. There okay. is another group where uh, three ladies' friends are there. So, there is okay. another group. And then there are there is one group which is actually across the India. Some people from Bangalore, Gujarat. Calcutta, well, there is a mixed group. So whenever okay. we go abroad, we go with that group. But okay. other two groups, basically Pune this, we go nearby places, LRK, GRK, Dandini, okay. all those places we have. But uh, okay. because of my medical background, I decided not to go solo. Solo. But I would love to go to solo. Whenever I used to go to Pabe and Simagar and all that areas. So yes. I used to go over yeah. solo. Correct. Not on big trips. Yes. Okay. Uh, so can you talk about some unique destinations that you've traveled and um, your experiences there? Like you shared the LRK and, you know, before the Great Indian Bustard. So, so as, as I said, um, Old Magazine House is my second home. Yeah. So I keep on going to London almost two or three times in a year. Okay. Um, I will go now this again February. 
but uh, okay. my favorite places are actually two places which i will share one is bhutan okay and another is costa rica bhutan for two three reasons one is the um, they have wonderful uh, opportunities for photography okay and uh, second thing is uh, bhutan they have wonderful i can say that outstanding level of service the kind okay. of service what they give you is unbelievable okay the hotels are too good the guides are too good and what they do is they do the planning so perfectly that they yeah. come and ask you earlier night that what kind of food you like what kind of things you want in breakfast lunch dinner everything and what they do is they tell you that come at certain place at 9 o'clock your breakfast will be ready come at this place your lunch will be ready so while you are doing birding on the road they are available on the road itself so they will put up chairs tables everything spoons forks so it's like a totally british kind of kenya kind oh. of treatment on the road itself so you get everything on the road and right. they will plug in wind up and start for the lunch and we start birding and oh, that's the uh, nice green yeah yeah they, they have beautiful paths uh, designed for photography and the okay. hotels and everything is so good uh, you right. get 4g signals everywhere hotels have wifi wherever they are even at chelela pass pelela pass 11000 feet high you get good wow. signals so wow. wonderful uh, infrastructure Costa Rica is again one of the best places I have visited so far. So just to interrupt one question from my from end, uh, yeah, one yeah. Uh, question: What is the right season to visit Bhutan? I mean, uh, generally, what is a good season Bhutan, for birding? Bhutan starts from October, but if you want to really see good birds and good uh, kind of habitats and backgrounds, then mm. it's in November to March. No, no, so after okay. March, the habitats will change. The the snow will almost go, okay. but uh, you get uh, altitude birds during November to March. March, okay, yeah, okay, thank you. I I will tell you two three places where one should go is uh, sure. Chilela Pass. Chilela okay. Pass. There is a wonderful uh, monastery called Tharpaling. Okay. And of course, the Paro and Thimpo and other places are there. Thimpo, yeah, correct. Yeah, where where you can do the birding on the road itself. Correct. So this is Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. So Costa Rica is basically you have to land at wow. San Jose. Okay. So the travel is very cumbersome. We have to go to somewhere in. maybe america or some near place france and wow. then land it into san jose and uh, from san jose they will take you the the route is designed so basically you go to highlands first and then okay. come down to lowlands and back okay. to san jose so it's a 10 to 12 days trip and okay. uh, this is what i was saying in the beginning was look for unique frames yes. so what yes. i do is uh, Uh, I studied these places well before I go, okay. and uh, almost, almost I know by the time I reach there, I know each and every resort kind of species I will see. I buy the books uh, before and only. I study all YouTube clips, everything, and then only I plan my gear and everything. Okay. So this is um, uh, this photograph is for by of the king vulture, and this king vulture is. Um, available in one of the resorts uh, the place is known as a boca tapada and okay. th- there is a uh, very two unique hides uh, mm. one hide is above the ground and another hide is below the ground okay so you have opportunity to shoot the birds from both the hides uh, it's a little bit uh, tough place to walk till to the hide okay. because uh, normally being a sort of a tropical area rainforest area It rains right. in between, but in fact, I wanted rare birds. These birds in the rain itself, because okay. I wanted them to clean 
while the rain is uh, right. raindrops are coming down so this is right. that uh, the typical logs in the and the, this is actually a dump a place of two three resorts where they put a lot of food oh. leftovers in that area okay. so you get black vultures this king mm. vulture uh kara kara those kind of birds over here so this is okay. one of the photograph what i shot there uh very interesting bird and one of the beautiful vulture i have seen yeah really oh, then wow. as every, everybody knows that uh, costa rica is very famous for hummingbirds i think yes. more than 50 species are available in costa rica right so uh, we had a very tough time on the day one when mm. we saw hummingbird because uh, as uh, most of us we know that Hummingbirds, the wings beat speed is minimum 70%. Mm, so correct. They will move the wings 70 times in a second. So freezing them wow. becomes a very tough in the beginning itself. So okay. on the day when we had a struggle to freeze them in the air, yeah. then we realized that we had to actually, and it was raining also on the day one. Mm. So, uh, as everybody knows, even though some people, there is a debate of ethical versus unethical and all that. But uh, mm. Costa Rica, most of the resorts, if you want, they have those uh, typical camera stands, what we call as the single um, column tripods, where mm. they can put up a purchase for you. Whatever okay. purchase you want, they will put up, they will sprinkle sugar syrup on it. Okay. And within seconds, the birds will start coming over. So mm. the, this is the white necked uh, Jacobin. Okay. So this was shot at uh, one upon two thousand feet. So very interesting uh, places there. But what they have done, uh, they are they have a very professional level heights. Oh. And uh, with uh, every um, they after um, they check with you. Have you done with your shots? You want me to change the perch? So immediately they will change the perch. They will take <laughs> you to another place within the hide. So they have a, one area. So this this was shot at the, where our resource manager stays. At his house only he has created this a small hide. And he oh. has some 10, 12 perches, 8, 10 locations within that uh, so-called 2,000 square feet area. So you have a perch to just keep on moving and Keep on fixing them. Wow. Beautiful. So, again, this wow. photograph of at his own, uh, these are actually very uh, wonderful parakeets or in yeah. chain parakeets. So, this is sort of a climber and they keep some food like uh, papayas and basically bananas. So, mm. they come, come over there to eat that. So they make a lot of noise, so the, you come to know that they are coming down. But the very interesting thing is, I was waiting for these birds to give some unique poses. Mm. Because they come from tree branches and come to this climber. And while okay. they come down from this branch, so I was waiting for them to give me some symmetrical shots. So this was oh, wow. one of the shots. Lovely. By the way, I have written exhibit details. So whenever yes. I post on Instagram, Facebook, I keep on right. giving my exit details. Yeah. But I prefer uh, 7.1, F7.1, F8, okay. F9. These are my okay. favorite apertures to shoot the birds. I very okay. rarely I will shoot at lowest F number, the 2.8, okay. F4. I will shoot very rarely on that because you don't okay. get the birds sharp. Yes. So this was um, my actually a dream bird, Tukan. The wow. killbill Tukan is a very big bird, and uh, this is taken with 100, 400 uh, lens and handled. Uh, so I was just waiting for this bird to come. So this yeah. um, particular resort called La Laguna Resort at Boca Tapana is yeah. Highland. This place is known as a Highland. Uh, so it's on the mountain side. So, and this this place is also very professional. So the moment we went there in, in the evening, they showed us the place. 
where from you can shoot, what kind of lenses you have. So they will tell you the positions, they can give you the angles. And the naturalist came to me, he said, you want me to change the purge? I will change the purge. So they change this purge. It's a huge law. And yeah. there is a metallic column where they will put up, a, they have a regular small crane for that. Hoist mm -hmm. and chain. And they will lift the branches, this uh, purchase. And you can shoot the birds from a wooden deck. And yeah. what they do is, uh, there is a wooden deck and there is a hotel dining place and wooden deck are nearby. Okay. Just touching each other. So you can have your food. As soon as the birds come, you can start shooting. I can start the food, start the whatever you are eating. <laughs> so, okay. So it's actually, um, you can call it as a luxury birding. Yeah. But we never left a single minute opportunity yeah. to shoot the Correct. bird. So morning 6 to evening 6, you can do the birding. So for us, food was secondary. Okay. So, uh, most of the times, uh, does it rain there or how is it? It no, has no, it clear depends. weather. It depends. Not okay. all the time it will rain. Okay. Because it's a basically a rainforest kind of area. Correct. Correct. So it, it rains, but it rains mostly during afternoons. So, okay. But it will rain and stop. But okay. luckily, not like uh, in our area, the bird okay. movement keeps on happening. You don't have to worry that. Now rains are there, heavy rain. So the hmm. okay. In this case, though, you will get the birds over there. Okay, all right. Yes. And of course, I was all the time I wanted the uh, rain and bird together. <laughs> okay. That makes actually very yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Something, yeah, correct. But you can see yeah. the way they choose the purchase and bring yeah. life into images. Absolutely. And wow. th this was a volcano hummingbird, and this was my first hummingbird in life, and also in Costa Rica. Uh, so I think uh, uh, Vajendi Madam had done one session with you. So yes, she, must have she, had done. she had some photographs. Correct. Correct. So this yes, this yes. was a volcano hummingbird, and uh, yeah. our first bird to see in uh, Costa Rica. Right. And so everybody was trying to shoot this bird because it was jumping from this bus to that bus. Uh, freezing was very tough because we reached there and we saw this bird. It was like the drizzling happening. So I was waiting for this um, hummingbird to come to this bus. So I had shot it at other purchase, but I was waiting for the and it came and sat for a few seconds. Then I clicked it. What a bird. See. Look at his purple thing down and yeah, the colors. Really and good. this is some very oh, amazing yeah. oh, bird. This is wow. Yeah. And what the most interesting thing is the way the light changes. Right. The yeah. bird color will also change. So sometimes the head will shine, sometimes the throat will shine, sometimes the wings will shine because the birds are like that. Their color keeps on changing with the light available. Wow. Okay. And this mm. is actually uh, the famous bird sartaris. They are also come from the Tukan varieties. So I had shot them single frames, but I wanted all the three in one okay. frame. There were four, but I wanted three of them together. And also I thought let their eyes also be seen in one frame. Luckily, oh. I could get this. This shot, wonderful. Yeah. Mm. And whenever I was shooting, I thought, let me get some different angles and yeah. let's bring some different uh, kind of a feel to the frames. Mm. So we kept on shooting this kind of birds on normal perches, um, on tree branches. So we thought, I thought, okay, why not to click this in while they are actually looking down for food. So I could get this. This is a brown hooded parrot. Right. Beautiful yeah. birds and Beautiful no, in this one frame, you can see how many colors, you know, yeah, yeah, can yes. be in one bird. There's not a thing. I mean, it doesn't even get into one shade of one color. No, no, no. It's, very it's completely diverse. So you keep on wondering now how these names come. So, yeah, even exactly. though it's a brown hooded, but you can get a lot of colors. Yes. The colors of Costa Rican birds are amazing. Yeah. 
basically that whole area colombia ecuador peru brazil right. these right. birds are amazing right yeah what they say is uh, almost 30% of the world population of the birds the 30% birds are available in costa rica itself costa rica yeah. wow so this is again the orange chain so while it was uh, climbing down i shot this this is uh, oh. one of the biggest uh, i mean bird from costa rica called talamanca talamanca mm. is a highland region little okay. height okay and we were little bit fooled by the earlier information given to us we thought mm. that costa rica is a sort of a not cold country hot country mm. so mm. but uh, i had a my checklist which i share with everybody the okay. checklist will always have some warm clothes and jacket okay okay so we were fooled by the territory but when we went to this highland it was a very cold area the talamanca region is very cold and this hummingbird is one of the biggest kind of hummingbird available there so they normally oh. look for this is natural purchase no, mm. no sugar syrup mm. or So this was shot at our first lodge called Progon Lodge. In... Okay. All right. So this bird is also changes the color very fast. You can see the pollens near the yes, uh, yeah. mouth. Yes. Yeah. And uh, these were my actually prized uh, photographs. This is uh, called violet. Yeah. Left side is a violet here. Yeah. Uh, this photo was selected by BBC R. Oh, okay. So this, I think, one of my favorite and most popular photograph on Instagram. Lovely, because this is um, amazing. Ninety k likes, so that. Oh. So, Wonderful. freezing them in air is a really great one. Yes. And yes. now we have those uh, Canon bodies where you can have eye tracking. Yeah. This was done with the seventy Mark II. Okay. And uh, Sigma Panda Defoliants. And this left side photograph is I keep on trying something. So we Sudhir Shivram was with us, so we thought we will try backlit photographs also. Hmm. So we sat uh, exactly in opposite direction, hmm. and we chose good perches where the hummingbirds are coming and right. hovering around. So that left side was frozen against the light somewhere around five o'clock in the evening. Again, it was a little bit cloudy, but the yeah. sun was shining, so we could mm -hmm. get those shots. And yeah. again, freezing two hummingbirds is a dream. Two or three, I yes. have done up to three, not more than that. <laughs> it's a great fun to freeze them. and uh, hovering around so i might have missed if you would have said this earlier but uh, just to for my knowledge what is the kind of um, for freezing the term that you are using uh, uh -huh. to capture these moments uh, what uh, are the settings that you generally carry See, uh, no, for your camera what uh, what we try is uh, if you go by the book then you yes. should be having You should be going to the lowest if number available on your lens, maybe a four yes. yeah, or okay. two point eight, whatever. Right. And then speed should be above one, above one divided by one thousand, two thousand, four thousand. Correct. Normal Correct. bodies allow you to go to up to one upon eight thousand. Correct. So, yeah. so you can actually freeze birds. Uh, I had done a lot of. Ex uh, Trials and kind of experiments. Right. So I have tried with f seven point one and f eight also. Okay. So okay. I I have frozen the bird in the air with f eight f seven point one and okay. also one upon five hundred. Okay. 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 All right. But nowadays, Lovely. if you, there are some setups available in Costa Rica where they provide you the flash setups, huh. so you can Correct. freeze a bird at I saw two hundred, three hundred, four hundred. Okay. Okay. So, but these are all with natural lights. Yeah. 
then again this was my favorite bird scarlet maca this is also a dream bird i i think most of the people who are in 40s will remember that our school exercise books used to have these yes. birds <laughs> on the cover uh, i i still remember my old days <laughs> i am a little bit old old batch person <laughs> in 70s we used to have tucans and all those birds on yeah. our school exercise book so this was yeah. this is again we were lucky we were supposed to go on a sea shore to see them but okay. our driver saw it and uh, he said um, macaws are there so we stopped on the road but very interesting both the places uh, uh, in bhutan and in costa rica i have seen is they honor bird photographers so we oh. actually blocked the road half the road was blocked by our bus and we were standing on the road with our um, trapdoors and cameras and everything 10 12 people and because we stopped some foreigners saw us they said what birds they also came <laughs> so some 20 30 people were shooting these birds but not a single vehicle came scolded us there were no honking in fact they honored they said don't worry you stay there we will wait for you so almost 20 30 minutes the all the traffic was stopped nobody complained and oh. uh, we could shoot them then our guide said ki the guide checked with everybody you got shot yes then here the traffic was again start and okay. this is a one of the lucky shot of black and white owl we got oh. it on a day time and this is a place called Tar- tarcolis is okay. famous for crocodiles park okay so, coming by we saw these uh, two owls one was pygmy and this one in a day time it is actually so, so like interesting me. the beak i mean the uh, owls this thing and the claws yes. the colors is completely you know yeah. very different yeah. in the sense wow very strong owl this owl is yes, very strong yeah. but it was very at height around 50 feet above okay then i think we have time no? i will share for yeah, yeah yeah of course yeah so in bhutan um, you have to land at paro and yeah. they will pick you up and the birding can start immediately after lunch even paro the city has a lot of birds uh, mm. that so called rare prey Um, black tail crack is also in the mm. city itself you can get on the road okay and this was of course my dream birds bhutan laughing thrush yeah. so we got there on the highway itself both were playing on the so this is not sense. on the hide it's on the it's in natural no habitat. yeah bhutan there are no hides there no hide places okay. uh, where you can get the birds is tharpling monastery where okay. the monks feed the birds i will show okay. that okay okay but uh, most of the birding in bhutan is on the road, road. but uh, um, they are very cooperative people they know the places well so they stop okay. the bus they will help you to put up trap or everything you don't have to even struggle for one minute okay they, they are, the guides are very good they know places well so this photograph was um, people were all the time asking me why you want to shoot snow pigeon i said no i want to shoot white on white so <laughs> a little tough yeah. to shoot the pigeon on the snow yeah. this was at yeah. tharpling monastery minus 6 degrees it was actually wow. snowy lovely so this was with uh, 302.8 meters okay this is actually uh, most of the people uh, we run after uh, monad himalayan monad yes yeah and uh, people avoid the uh, female of the monad correct because yeah. they think that she is not attractive but mm. actually the beauty of this female trogon is her tail and the eyes mm. and uh, this happening honestly they feed the birds because they are very religious monks so right. they feed the birds with um, rice and other grains they okay. keep the gunny bag full rice anybody can walk pick up the rice and put it on the road so these were actually during a snowfall i have shot them they came very close so i had to remove my twigs to see and shot at uh, 300 and right lovely this is again on the road uh, everybody knows the honey guide is very wonderful honey. bird to show yes not yes. easy to see but i wanted this um, image uh, 
desperately i had seen one of the award winning image in nif okay and uh, aditya chavan from pune had one of the similar image right so we saw this bird and it was at very high cliff 70 feet above the road so okay. i wanted this frame so i was waiting for that bird to come sit on the honeycomb before it it uh, shot it so this is yeah. very interesting yeah. then yeah. again more, uh, i had shot monal in chota and other chota. places yes but i wanted uh, on snow. snow so snow cladded area so it was actually snowing minus 6 degree and uh, it luckily two monal came in and it sat on a mound so i could get a this photograph i wanted it but right. i have one another dream frame which i will share okay this is again a wide board full vector not easy to get full vector yeah game. but uh, you get it in arpling monastery very beautiful monastery the monks are so kind they give you very hot tea no charges they will help you whatever you want they will oh. guide you to the places they will tell you which side you go we will find the birds they allow okay. you to sit anywhere in the monastery Monastery, beautiful place yeah. Yeah, wow. this is again on the road side so white oh, colored color. black bird so we were, yeah. i was waiting for this bird to sit on this wooden log mm. uh, it's on the highway actually okay. i wanted the any time any bird to sit on this log because i wanted those flowers to come behind yeah, uh, it, okay. it was just season this was in the second week of march okay no ha huh, it was second week of march then again a uh, green tail bird oh. this is uh, shot in the botanical royal botanical garden okay. uh, in fact uh, what happened was uh, it was last day last leg of our tour and they were and we forgot that it was a sunday so this mm-hmm. royal botanical garden what happens is lot of tourists come in the bhutanese family they come in and they enjoy the park as a sort of a holiday outing so many birds had vanished because of the people playing around oh. so i was shooting kids around they were playing so i was trying to take portrait and suddenly guide said ki sir aapke upar dekho kon hai so he, <laughs> this bird was just sitting 4 feet away from me oh. so i okay. removed the tc and shot it and this is another was lifer for me black throated mm. sunbird this is mm. a beautiful sunbird again beautiful, like a yeah. costa rican bird uh, the color keeps on changing the way the light falls on it was again 10 to 12 feet from the highway and it yes. kept on playing for more than 10 12 minutes in front of us wow and this is again a dream bird yeah pleasant yeah yeah blood pleasant yeah. there is a place called ura hmm bhutan this is uh, at height okay. more than i think 10000 feet height very mm. cold place uh, we when we went there it was minus 3 degrees it was snowing and very mm. cold because you can't remove your hand gloves and uh, but like you everybody will get a surprise the government itself has put a board on the starting of this pass saying that you get a lot of peasants here the board itself <laughs> is, and they tell you that this 12 km stretch from this point onwards you get yeah. a lot of peasants so yeah. we were searching and we got within few minutes of them so we were waiting for them to come on a good uh, kind of habitat perch you i shot this i actually standing on the highway itself wow okay and we struggled to get this birds for almost 3 4 hours without having our lunch and by 4 o'clock uh, we started winding up uh, and it was at very high and very cold so people thought hey, let's go back to our bus so we went to our bus started back when we came down to our main board where we saw the peasants we, you will see the pigeon there were not one two 40 odd peasants were playing around that board wow and by, everybody was so exhausted nobody wanted to get down <laughs> and shoot that so we shot from window and move window yeah lovely 
think this will oh, be my last uh, photo. This is actually Beautiful. from again from Harpalim Monastery. This is my dream shot. So Lovely. I was uh, lying on the snow for 20 odd minutes. I had removed my hand gloves of right hand because I wanted to play. <laughs> and it was a freezing temperature, so minus 60. Right. Okay. But I knew that the there were two monas playing around. I knew mm -hmm. that somebody will walk and they will start playing. So this was a very short window of within two trees. So I could get three, four shots. This is one of my favorite. Beautiful. Shots. Yeah, this is really beautiful. Yeah. I hope I'm not taking extra time. <laughs> no, no, not, yeah. not at all. So these were so wonderful. I mean, I'm sure this is, you know, a very teeny tiny portion of your entire, you know, collection for that matter. It's one of those things. So I would like to tell the audience that you should visit his uh, Insta page and, uh, you know, have a look at the uh, wonderful photographs that he has actually clicked and so we always believe that there's always a story behind what he said right now, you know, everything he's explained with a story. So it's never, you just go to the forest and click a photo and come back, or you go into the nature and click something and come back. It always has something with it, some interesting thing, or it's just mere, you know, the experience of the entire yes, thing. Yes. Yeah. So it, a, a photo always has a story. Uh, so, uh, sir, I would like to ask you that you've got these numerous records and accolades and all. So, uh, you told me a few of them that you decided that you will post these many. So, apart mm -hmm. from that, are there any other ones that of your achievements that you would like to mention? And how did you do that? And are you aiming for a few more? So, what I started doing is... Um... Okay. These are the places I visited with talk. Yeah, yeah, um, correct. Oh, nice. Lovely. So what I did now, first year, I completed the challenge of 366 okay. birds without break. So uh, I was about to stop the process. I said ki on 31st December, I told my friends that now is over, my challenge is over. <laughs> yeah. A few of friends called me said, don't do that. Now continue. Let's do for one more year. I said, okay, we'll do it. Okay. Now it went to now. This is my ninth season. The eighth season is also got over. Oh, okay. So, so I decided. I kept on applying for Asia Book and uh, India Book. So right. even I was I'm invited for world records, but okay. I have not still given a thought on it. So world okay. records has given me offer for its year uh, record but oh, i wow. thought hey, i will not apply now because mm -hmm. i was i am waiting for 18th march to come so okay. 18th march i will be completing my 3000 post okay okay so All that right. time i will give a thought because um, asia book has already invited me for okay. uh, record uh, setting the record so oh, i will nice. go with uh, asia book and world book has also offered so okay. I may register at world records, but okay. uh, then I may not actually apply for records now. After 3000, okay. I thought, I think it's okay. <laughs> if I, yeah, okay. If I it's... can continue up to 5000, then it's a different uh, <laughs> yeah. thought. But, yeah, but uh, other than this, I got uh, uh, Africa Geographic uh, Award for my one of the photographs from Masai Mara. Where okay. a lioness hunted three wild beasts in 12 minutes. So, oh. one of the short, uh, and this is actually not a, a, a regular behavior of lioness. Right. They don't kill mm -hmm. animals for just sake of killing it, it's for food. Yeah. Right. right. She right. did the killing for a heck of it, just to do it. And she yeah. showed everybody that I can do it within 12 minutes. She killed three wild beasts. <laughs> it's like a Kabaddi going on on the so sea, Mara <laughs> yeah. River. She was yeah. just picking yeah. up the wild beasts and killing. Yeah. So yeah. one of the photographs, they asked me, ki, of course, I got an award for it, two awards on that photograph. So they said ki, uh, they want to put it on the their uh, research document. So it is mm -hmm. available on their gallery and also research document. After that, I got some two awards recently uh, for my books. So those who are interested, it's not actually promotion of my books. No, that's so, completely fine. So I'm I sure they can get directly in touch with you for these uh, books. Yeah, yeah. So anyone who's yeah. interested, yeah. 
So my always there was a dream to publish a book of old magazine house. So I have actually published a book on. It's not actually a coffee table book, but mm. say both the books are eight inches by eight inches, all color plates. Uh, so this old magazine house is around one forty plus pages. So I have okay. covered hundred species from there, and okay. Chitra Kathi is actually a, what we have today's discussion topic. Right. So I have published my thirty five wildlife stories in this book. Okay. 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 From all over the world, so I have actually jotted down hundred or, but uh, this book became one eighty pages. Then I thought I have to stop somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So I have stopped at uh, uh, thirty four stories. Then one okay. of my friends said from Dubai, no, no, Sudhir, you must cover Dubai also. Okay. So many people they don't know that Dubai has lot of wild. It so yeah. Lot of it birds does. are. Correct. So I have covered the Dubai, I added Dubai story and then this book was closed. So on this second fab, I got a Golden Book Award for both the books. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this is amazing. And I, I think there will be one more award coming, which they have okay. contacted me for Chitra Kati, this my okay. wildlife story book. Okay. So this may okay. get declared in by this month. Okay. Okay. Amazing. Oof, this is really but this goes to show that you know uh you've been in this journey and you know you kind of uh been a very methodical person when you say that you you study something and go you have yes, adequate yes. knowledge so this is these are all the learnings from you know we will summarize in the end but i felt right now that why this is the outcome of your uh, very meticulous efforts and yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome. you know method methodological approach basically so that's amazing so i see you've done more of bird photography rather than mammals mammals is there obviously but you're not much into tigers as most of the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> photographers are. so is there any reason behind that yeah i have done that now okay. because most of the wildlife sciences i have done through but uh, okay. compared to mammals yes birds yeah, attract me birds. more Correct. And uh, okay. for mammal purpose only, I did uh, uh, Tanzania and Kenya. Tanzania, Kenya, yeah. yeah amazing experience. Uh, over yes, there. I'm sure. Because so, I, you said uh, uh, methodical, na? I, I want yeah. to share something interesting. Sure. Let me see. Sure. Can share. Yeah. I can share more documents or I have to stop sharing this and come. No, uh, if you have to stop sharing this presentation will, and share something else. Yeah, I will show one simple document which I keep. Sure. So what I have done here, I think you can see the Excel. Yes, yes. Excel, so what yes. It is, uh, if you look at the bottom, okay. I have my whatever I have published on the Facebook and also on okay. Instagram okay. is listed down over here. Okay. From 2016 till today. Yeah. Then I write down the serial number when I uh, actually published it, how many likes were there, what is the serial number, whether it was a lifer to me. So okay. all this data is there on my Excel sheet. I keep backup of Wonderful. this. Wonderful. And every year I will download my Instagram and Facebook uh, data and keep it as a record. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. This is what actually. Yes. Yes. Amazing. So this this kind of data helps you. <laughs> yes, it does. So, uh, one last question. So we have our uh, venture is more for women, though the audience right now is mixed. Mix. So, but uh, we target more. I want to get more women into nature and wildlife. It's just not going and clicking photos, but just being aware. Of the entire thing. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, with the kind of um, challenges that they have in terms of home front, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but they still can take time out, you know, and step out for yes, some time. Yes. So, uh, do you have any certain message for them after being in this field for so many years? And you have your uh, co birders as women, also, you mentioned that yes, you have. Yes, okay. yes. So, what do you think? I mean, would you like to give a message to them? Um, what one one thing what I have done and I keep keep on sharing is that 
I have collected a lot of guides data across the world. Okay. So not only India, but across the world. And I know which are the places very safe, right. which are the guides which are actually helpful and safe for you. Okay. So I keep on sharing that data with all the ladies photographers. Okay. So whoever wants, I share that data. I give the contact numbers because I know that it's a safe place to go, safe to be there. And in case somebody is traveling to some destination, which I know that it is a little bit risky, I also tell them, look, this is the area where you should be careful. But right. what I'm seeing is that um, the way I do the study, well, the, not only ladies, but everybody should do the study before and you go there. So now okay. you can pre-visualize shots. You can actually study the area, what kind of okay. things you need. So I I can share that checklist with uh, all of you. I have sure. some 30 plus point checklist. If you want to go wow. on wildlife photography, what you should be doing. Right. And I have that checklist, which I have published in the book also. And uh, we are creating one more book for bird photography. Okay. All right. So that book is scheduled in next uh, two months time. So All in right. that book also, we are actually giving a lot of tips plus this take results. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. There are a couple of uh, chats down which I would like to cover. Yeah. Uh, what you've already said this, I think, what avenues to get guidance for Costa Rica and equatorial countries. We can definitely get in touch with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, yeah, sure. tips, uh, for photography in such weather which you mentioned a uh, couple of them what does a Tuscan feed on just corn feed on any uh, particular thing that it eats toucans yeah toucans toucans basically feed on fruits they also take some reptiles but right. I think uh, in, again the question of ethical versus unethical um, this uh, resource they have actually sort of uh, made them habitual to fruits. Okay. So, papayas and uh, watermelons and basically bananas. So okay. They eat fruits more. All right. Uh, Aparna Bhagwe says the stories and background information related to these birding trips locations, climatic conditions, etc. value additions to your presentation. Always. The stories and everything was really very insightful and nice. We would uh, we really enjoyed the entire presentation. So uh, those were the questions, and uh, thank you so much. I would just like to uh, Madhulika, are you around? Yeah, you can. So, sir, we express our gratitude for your valuable time and uh, for gracing today's webinar with your kind presence and extensive knowledge. It was a pleasant experience to have you as a guest speaker with a deep passion for photography and wildlife. My so pleasure. we look forward to welcoming you in our future for our future initiatives. Sure, Thank you sure. once again. Yeah, anybody wants any kind of information, do contact me. Uh, if you get hold of my book, Chitra Gati, uh, yeah. while I'm telling the whole story, I have given a lot of data into it. Correct. So, and my upcoming... Sure. Book will also give a lot of uh, budding destinations. Information. Absolutely, yeah. Thank, thank you, thank so, you so, so much, Sudhis, again. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you all for joining thank us in the session. See yeah, you all I in the next webinar. Yes, 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 thank you so much. Have a nice thank day. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.